Hey guys, it's Mo. So I have another Cricut related video for you today. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Cricut, a Cricut, a sticker sheet in Inkscape that you can then upload to Cricut Explore and use the print then cut feature. Um, I will have a video later on in the month about why I think you need some supplemental programs uh, to use with your Cricut Explore. And I'll also leave a link to a blog post of three free programs that I think you totally should use and utilize with your Cricut Explore. The one that I'm going to talk about today is Inkscape. It's a free drawing program. I've talked about it a lot before. And the reason why I'm going to create a sticker sheet in Inkscape is if you're familiar with using design space, you know that sometimes it can lag horribly. You'll get shockwave crashes. You won't be able to cut if your file has too many layers. It's much easier to use design space as a tool rather than a space to design. Um, so we're going to use Inkscape today and I'm actually going to use a PNG image. This is a planner image. I'll open it up here so you can see it larger. It's just a really cute little planner image and I'm going to show you how to make an offset because you can't make an offset in Cricut Design Space. So it'll have a little white border around here and look more like a professional sticker sheet. It's not going to cut right up to this border here. If you want to do that, you totally can. Uh, I prefer to have borders around my, my stickers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to close this out. I'm going to open up a new canvas in Inkscape. Like I said, Inkscape is free. You can download it at inkscape.org um, and install it. It's really easy. It looks really complicated, but there's just a few things you just have to keep in mind when you're, when you're working with stuff. Um, so I'm going to take this planner image and I'm going to drag it onto the canvas. I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to not check anything. And you can see this is pretty big. I am going to lock the aspect ratio and change the measurement from pixels to inches. So we can see that this image is about 10 inches wide by 7 inches tall. That's a huge, huge image. You don't necessarily need an image to be, to be that big. What I am going to do is show you how to create an offset around this. What we first want to do is size this down to be the size that we want it to be. I'm thinking that I want my sticker to be about maybe point under an under an inch tall or yeah, under an inch in width. So I'm going to change this to about 0.8. Whoops. And that's going to shrink it down really, really small. And that's okay. I'm going to use my uh, shortcut keys, which is control, and then to scroll in using my scroll on my mouse to zoom in on it. What we're going to do to make this offset, it's not technically an offset. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but it's not technically an offset. But what we're going to do is open up this fill bounded areas uh, guy here. You want to make sure this is set to alpha and you want to increase um, the grow or shrink by, let's try it here first, that is way too big. So control Z, let's see, I'm going to start with about 25 and see how big that is. That still looks a little bit too big, control Z, and let's do 15. And what I'm doing is it's growing the outline of this by 15 pixels, and I'm just setting that grow shrink and clicking on the inside of my sticker image. Now we can go back to the select and transform objects, just a little arrow key. Click on this down arrow button. This is going to push this gray box all the way to the back. That's still quite big. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Go back to this fill uh, bounded areas. I'm going to set this to, let's see, eight and see what happens. And you just keep doing that until you feel like you have a good offset around your image. You just want a good offset around your planner image here. You can do this with any images, PNG images that you find. You can use them from Etsy. If you find PNG images online, you can do this technique. Um, that's what's great about it. The Inkscape allows you to import vectors. It also allows you to import um, Adobe Illustrator files, and it also allows you to import PNG files so that you can work with them in a way that's not going to cause any lagging in your design system. And it's also going to let you save it outside of Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to lower this to the bottom again. I think that's still too big. Honestly, this is just playing around with it. Let's lower this down to four and see what happens here. Do this, send it to the back. That might be a little bit too small. 
we'll go to five, do this, lower this to the back. That seems like a good, a good offset. We are going to change this color. Once it comes down to it, we're going to change this color. But in order to see it here um, clearly on the white background that we're going to be working with, I'm going to leave it at as this gray color. So then you just want to drag and select all. Use your shortcut keys again, control G. That's going to group everything together so you can move it together. And you can see the width of this is now about almost an inch. I'm going to lower it down a little bit more and make it a little bit smaller. Make sure you keep those proportions locked by making sure this lock is in fact locked. And uh, that's just the size I want my sticker sheet to be. Now we're going to go over here. We're going to leave that alone for a second. We're going to go over here and we're going to draw a box. We're also going to change the height and width of this box. Chrome, which is the um, web browser that I use with my Cricut Explore. The print and cut area for Chrome is 5.5 by 8 inches wide. So we want to unlock this, type in 5.5 and type in 8, and that's going to create an area that's 5.5 inches wide and 8 inches tall. I'm going to go over here to the fill and stroke. If you don't see the fill and stroke over there. Um, let's see here. You can go under object and click on fill and stroke and it should come up in your little uh, like toolbox pane over here. I'm going to change this to red just because. So now what we want to do is fill in this sticker sheet. We're going to use this up arrow here that brings everything to the front or our sticker. This is the sticker to the front. Now we're going to fill in the sticker sheet. If you watched my how to make a sticker sheet in Cricut Design Space tutorial, it's going to be similar to this. And you can totally repeat this process in Cricut Design Space with a PNG that you have created an offset on. Um, I will leave a link down below to how to create PNG images using um, Inkscape. It's a silhouette tutorial, but you can watch maybe the first half of it and it should give you a good idea. We're going to do similar processes here, but this is a whole different tutorial. And with all my tutorials, you can totally mix and match whatever you want to do. So uh, we're going to select this sticker. I'm going to use my control key and then I'm going to scroll in on the mouse to get a good zoom going in here. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. What we want to do is to just fill this up with stickers. So I'm going to take this, highlight this one, hold down the shift key and highlight uh, the back rectangle that we drew as well. And I want to show you, if you go to object, align and distribute, you should be able to have it over in your pane over here. I think mine is already over here. Yes. Yeah. So if you go object, align and distribute, it's and click on that it's going to bring this up in your toolbox pane over here. What we want to do is make sure relative to is set to selection area because we're going to start aligning these objects to this object. So we want to make sure the top is aligned. We want to make sure the left is aligned. Then we're going to hit control C, control V, 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 and just paste them across. I'm going to take this one, highlight that one, hold down my shift key, and select the background as well. Then we're going to also align top, and this time align right. Then we're going to drag and select all of these, align top, then we're going to use the distribute function. A lot of these are exactly the same uh, kind of workings as in Cricut Design Space. Use the distribute uh, horizontally function here. Make sure you use this one to make it equal. Some of these will create some kind of like skewed um, distribution. We want everything to be distributed equally. So now we have all of those planners distributed equally. We're going to select all the planners again. Control G. That's going to group them together. We're going to use our control shortcut key and zoom out using our scroll um, button on the mouse. Then you can take this, select your planners, you can hit control D, that's going to duplicate it, it looks like nothing's happened, but then you hold down your shift key and use your arrow key to nudge it down. Then we can also highlight all those, control D, it's going to look like nothing happened, but you did make a duplicate, hold down the shift key and nudge those down. And what we're trying to do is fill up this whole space. So we can highlight those again, control D, again, shift, hold down the shift key and use your arrow key 
to nudge it down. And it looks like we may only need one more, so I'm just going to highlight the last row, Control D, Shift key, arrow down. What we need to do is make sure this last row is highlighted. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and click on our background while holding down the Shift key as well. So you want the last row and the background highlighted here. We're going to align bottom. I'm going to zoom out. I am going to select everything here, drag and select everything. You can see everything is selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key and unselect the background. You should have seen those little marquee guys disappear on the sides here. That means the background is separate from our group of planners. Then we're going to distribute vertically using this to make the vertical gaps equal. Hit distribute vertically. And now we have something that is exactly 5.5 by 8 inches wide. Now we can um, delete or move the background. I'm going to actually select it, the background, and move it to the side. I don't want to delete it yet, but I want it out of the way. So next what we want to do is make all of these little gray boxes here, gray little funny shapes, white. And that's because that's going to be our offset. That's what's going to um, cu be cut around. We want to tell the Cricut to cut around this guy here, but we also want to keep this transparent background. And you can see how helpful it was against the white background and everything to see the contrast between the gray and that deep pinky color over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all by dragging, clicking and dragging the mouse. You want to hit shift control and then Keep hitting your G key until everything is ungrouped. And you'll know everything is ungrouped when you can select the planner image separate from the gray box. So I want to select one of the gray boxes. It doesn't matter which one. And then I want to go to Edit, Select Same, Fill and Stroke. And that's going to select all of the gray boxes in the background. And to quickly zoom in and out, I'm holding down the control key and then using the scroll uh, feature on my mouse. So now we have all of those gray boxes selected. I know it looks like that the planners are also selected, but that's just because they fall within the boundaries of those gray boxes. Then we want to go to fill and stroke. If it's not in your little toolbox pane here, you can go to object and click on fill and stroke. And we want to change this to white by dragging this little um, eyeball guy wherever. We want to drag him over to white. And you can see they all turn to white. If we move this guy back over here, if I can get him to do it, you can see now everything is white. Now, the beauty of matching everything and lining things up to the edge of this pink rectangle is that you're going to be maximizing the width and height of the print area, excuse me, of the print area of the print and cut feature in your Cricut Explore. So now what we want to do, you can add a little uh, like branding strip if you're going to offer this as a free printable, like on your blog or something like that, which is what I often do. Um, I use the text feature and write in like free for personal use or something like that. If you're making these for yourself, this is definitely fine. And you can see now we haven't had any lag features. We haven't had any, um, we were able to make this offset that, to, that you're not able to do in Cricut Design Space. Um, we also haven't had any shockwave crashes. It's just been, we're also not connected to the internet. You don't have to be connected to the internet to use Inkscape. So what we're going to do is click on export PNG image. And that should be under, let's see here, file export PNG image. You should be able to click on that and it'll show up in your toolbox pane over here. So export PNG image. You don't want to change any of these items here. You want to make sure you have 300 DPI, leave the pix or yeah, leave the pixels fine. Don't touch anything. Just go over to export as. We're going to find where we want to save it as. Then type in the name that you would like to give this sticker sheet. I'm going to call it planner sheet. Why not? Hit enter. You may think that you have saved it, but you have not. You've simply simply given the program a place to save this once we hit export. So what we need to do is click on export. Once this loads, you will have a sticker sheet that you can upload to Cricut Design Space. So we'll go over to Cricut Design Space, go to File, uh, New Project. You can see how, how laggy this is. It's just 
it's not fun to design in. <laughs> it's just not fun. And the quicker you get at designing an Inkscape, the easier it's going to be. So we'll go to Upload Images, Upload Image, Browse, Planner Sheet. You can see it's right here. We can click on Open. I'm going to click on Complex Image once it loads. See, again, with the lagging. Like I said, it's great to use Cricut and the Cricut Explorer and Design Space as a tool rather than a design software. So complex image, you can see a little bit of this little like uh, halo of white around each of these. We can hit continue. You can see that there, we, if we hit preview, you'll see that it's going to, ugh, it's going to cut around the outside of the image. So we have all of these little planners here. Isn't that neat? Then we're just, we don't have to do any, any touching up. You don't have to do anything. Then you just hit continue. We're going to wait for this to load. You're going to save it as whatever you want to save it as. Planner sheet, whatever you want to save it as. Click on uh, save as a print, then cut image, and then click on save. So once the sticker sheet here has been saved to your library, you can click on it and click on insert images. And you see it's not going to be sized properly, but we already know that we made it 5.5 by 8 inches wide. Or I'm sorry, 5.5 wide by 8 inches high. So we can just change the width and the height will automatically, as long as you have this locked, the height will automatically change as well. It's hard to tell, but there is that little bit of white space around this uh, planner stickers here. So if you click on Go, You can see that you have a full sheet of stickers using the maximum print and cut area. I use Chrome. The maximum print and cut area is 5.5 by 8. I just prefer to use Chrome and lose an inch and a half. I think I, use, I lose an inch or a half an inch on each side. I can't remember. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I like the way Chrome works, and so that's what I've had most success with. Um, you can leave the bleed on. I think that the bleed works best for my machine to get the cut perfect. Um, you can see it's not bleeding any of this color. It's going to bleed this white border, which is very, very hard to see. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to zoom in on this at all using my zooming. No. Um, it's hard to see and there's no way to zoom in on it, but this little, the little spotty cuts into these grid lines, that's your, your offset. So um, you can see the difference between, I've uploaded the regular planner image without the offset around it. And you can see, let's see if we can just make this bigger for Pete's sake. Let's see if I change this to 10. You can see that little white border is there and it's not around here. So on this one, it's going to cut straight up right next to the planner. If you want more of that sticker shop feel, you're going to want this offset kind of thing. So I'm going to go back and change this to 5.5 and I'm going to delete this guy. So there you have it. That is how you make a sticker sheet in Inkscape, exporting it as a PNG and then uploading it to Cricut Design Space without all the lagging, without all the struggle, without all the frustration. If you find yourself getting really frustrated using Design Space to design, you might want to think about moving into something like Inkscape. I will leave a link to all my other tutorials using Inkscape down below. I hope this video was helpful. You can do this with any element that you have, a PNG image from Etsy, you can design your own hearts or circles or icons or whatever, whatever you want to do. And because this isn't a layered file, it's a PNG, it's not going to cause Cricut Design Space to crash or lag when it's sending the, uh, what do you call it, when it's sending the file to the actual machine. There's not going to be any like, I can't cut this kind of thing. It's not going to take forever. It's just going to print it and it's just going to cut it. So like I said, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Let me know down below anything else you'd like me to do. Any other tutorials you'd like me to do using Cricut Design Space, Inkscape, using the silhouette. I always want to root for the underdog, which in this case is the Cricut Explorer. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. I just want to say that I have been loving seeing the subscriber count, subscriber count rise because that means I'm doing something to reach somebody and I love to teach. So again, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.